Hello, hello, ho, ho, ho. It's the time of year here at Seaporium. And I am working on another fun project. We just rounded up um, a video doing the chip brush Santas. They all came out really cute. And now we're gonna work on a different sort of uh, clay project using Iron Orchid Designs um, air dry clay. And wait till you see what we do with these. It's so fun. Thanks for joining us. If you like my kind of crazy, please subscribe to us here on YouTube. Give our social media um, a like or a follow. We're on all the social media. Everything is slash Seaporium here at YouTube. It's at Seaporium at the end of, you know, YouTube.com at Seaporium. And then the rest is just slash Seaporium. All right. So we're also available online. We're Iron Orchid Designs retailers. We're Dixie Bell um, paint and accessories retailers. So it's bells and whistles. It's the stains and waxes and top coats and paints and silk mineral paint and you name it, we got it, okay? Um, we're, we're really big into DIY and we're located in, uh, on Cape Cod. So if you're ever in the area in South Coast, Massachusetts, please come down and see this beautiful area and come down and say hello to us at the store here. And um, what I'm working on now, I'm just gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna give another view here. All right, and there we go. The wonders of editing for yourself. So what I have are a various amount of little hats here. And I want to show you how I did these. Okay, this one has a little crack on the bottom. It's not going to be a big deal. There was one, these are all dry. They've been dry for several days, probably a week. One, there's a crack right there. Um, we're going to fix that. And technically, I guess, we could have done all this that we're going to do right now together, like what we're going to add to these. Um, but either way, I think would work. My concern is if you try to do everything all at once to this point at this first clip, I believe, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the glue would do. So you could form the hat, we're going to add molds, and we're going to add some really cute beard. Beards to these little gnomes. Wait till you see. Wait till you see this. It's going to be super fun. So I've got, you know, like I said, the Air, Iron Orchid Designs Air Dry Clay. And I'm just, you know, you take it out of the package. I have it, you know, in the package, double bagged, all right? And you could just make the shape. All right, you could just kind of make yourself a, I think this is what I did last year when I did these. I did, the, again, these were for an Iron Orchid Designs live video. I do videos for them um, first and third Wednesdays of the month, at least at the point of this taping. And um, you could just sort of form them. And I think I just kind of like would roll between my hands but you know, this would definitely take several days to dry because that's a big hunk of clay. If you want to, and then, you know, you got to work with, you know, parts of it that are dry and ones that aren't, and parts that aren't. So what I did this year is I took some foil. It doesn't matter, you know, get the cheapest foil. All we're doing is we're making a base, kind of like for paper mache. Okay, we'll make this one a little bit bigger and taller. And you're just gonna start to make a shape. Maybe this tall so we can add like a nice um, brim to him, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this. All I did is took paper clips and you could use something fancier um, for a hook. But I think a paper clip works just, just as well. You know, you could reshape it so this isn't as deep of a hook. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to roll it into this foil.
Okay, let's just get it caught in there nice. Okay, and then you just want to just keep building this shape until you get what you like. Now I wish I could do this all on, on time lapse, but that's not going to happen. And we can do this like this. This is enough of a point there. I want to make the base a little bit broader. Okay, and just keep squeezing it all as tight as you can. Because in the end, you don't want this wiggling inside your clay. Because what would happen is your clay would eventually start to um, get that movement and it could crack. So this part, if you're not comfortable, if your hands aren't strong enough to do this nice and tight, then I suggest that um, you do it the first way I showed you was just by forming the clay itself. This will use less clay and you know if that's important to you to save a buck I mean this foil is less expensive than that amount of clay. But the clay it definitely was was kind of like working with like cookie dough or pie dough making the shape right it's it, it's kind of fun. We're going to add some more still. I think I'm making it bigger and taller, which is okay at this point, but I don't want to keep doing that. So, sorry about the noise. Let's just go ahead and do this. Pinch it all nice and tight, as tight as you can. Okay, that's probably not bad because you've got to consider we're going to be putting a brim on here and we're going to be putting um, clay around it. Okay, so pinch it as tight as you can. Okay, so now that that's done, let's get this clay out again. And if you watch the videos, you know that um, I do the clay, I, I store it in, in two baggies. The bag that it's stored in has a little piece of like a damp paper towel, lightly damp. And I'm just going to start rolling out some clay here. Kind of like in a in a triangle shape. Okay. And to get these little curls, you just add a little bit of clay at the end. But this hat's tall enough. I'll show you how you how you would do it. You don't want this clay, I found, too thin because we're going to be, you know, pinching it around the foil and then I found, you know, that we were getting through to some foil. I have one of these hats, it's a little skimpy, but um, we can always decoupage um, a finish onto that one. Let's see how we're doing here. So we're going to roll this around best we can. Okay, that looks good. And we just need to add just the smallest amount to the bottom here. I think we can marry it nicely just by, of course we need some for the bottom. There's nothing on the bottom. So let's see, let's add enough. And what will happen is I could have put actually, because when we were working with clay, I should dust my little, I have a little plate here, okay? Um, with cornstarch and see I'm just going to kind of marry these seams in together here 
And that way we have our bottom done. Okay, and now we can kind of twist and turn this and marry those seams together. And what I find is if you use a little bit of water, it'll help kind of marry it all together better. Okay, that clay wasn't down onto the foil there. It was like a bubble. Okay. So we're just going to marry this clay kind of it's kind of like, what, when have I used this kind of, when you're doing like um, an egg seal on a certain, when you're doing like a bread form and you're using the egg wash to kind of blend, that's the same idea. If you're a baker, you understand you've done something like that, okay? If you're a potter, you know how to do that, all right? With your slip, all right, so. That's looking pretty good. It's okay if it's a little lumpy. This is handmade, you guys. All right. This is a tall one. We can use a nice big brim on this one. So see how I have this excess on the top? I could just kind of keep pinching it. But I want to show you when you have the excess, you can make it like a, I could just do like a little curl on this one. And I'm just sort of twisting it. And then pinch it in on itself. And then when you have these curls, what I found is if you have the big weighty ones, you're going to want to tip them down to dry because the weight of having um, the clay sitting off the end here was making them kind of break and fall off. And it's okay if you have some wrinkles because a, a hat that has the little curl on the top would be wrinkled, it would have the folds. So do you see, it has the little folds. And then we set this to dry, or if you really want to rush things, like I said, we can take this another step now. I'm not sure what I did last year. I may have actually put the mold on at this point, but this part, this next step, let me just fold this clay over because, um, and put that paper towel underneath it. I double bag it, I was starting to say. So I have this, my open bag with a damp paper, lightly damp paper towel. Kind of like with rice, you don't want it wet. You don't want to have that foil with a wet paper towel in there. That's too much, just damp. Just enough so it adds a little moisture into the, into your, your bag so that it doesn't dry out. You know, get the air out, you seal this, then you put this inside another bag and that's how we store it once I end for the night. So we're gonna add brims to these hats. And we have options. I'm, I'm probably going to use some of this swag from the Holly Lane. It's a brand new release mold this year. And I think that would make a cute brim with the Holly. We have options with the trimmings molds as well. We could use Laurel. All right. We have this cute, I think it's almost like an olive leaf. All right. Here we have different ones. Of course, a lot of these are very small. And I realized that I should have made them just a hair taller because these nice big um, molds here, I'm only going to have like that much hat left over. So I'm going to be limited to what molds I use. So that one would probably be about the widest I would use. Okay. We're going to set this over here because this one's still wet clay. But I want to show you, you also has to prepare for this, this whole next part. We need a beard and we're going to attach it with this mold. 
This is so cute. So cute. So you have these trimmings and you want to start, you know, with your seam at the back. And whatever mold you do choose, it's a good idea if you just make it so that it, the trim, because usually they have an edge on it. So see how we have, this is so fun, the ostrich feathers, I think. So it has this like band at the top. And we're going to put the mold over all of this, okay? We want to put this down as far to the bottom as possible. and have the seam, you know, towards whatever the back is, right, in the mold. So we have this option, which is so freaking cute. And this is what we did last year. And I went and found some more. I, gosh, I hope, I, I got this at Hobby Lobby. It's a fringe in their sewing department where the trimmings are for like weddings. The laces and things like that and fringes for for not for upholstery but look at it has fun um, sequins in it can you see that and that makes a really cool beard as well all right and just like our other project with the chip brush gnomes we need to make a little nose too so all this is going to happen really fast this is a super fast project that has high results because it's so stinking cute okay you could go once around with this you could also if you prefer take your trimming okay and put it at the bottom if you didn't give yourself you know enough room with your choice of band that you're going to put for your hat you could take this and pinch it at the bottom of the hat and glue it that way. But see what's going to happen is depending on the, the band that it's on, it might stick out a little bit. But that would work. So I don't know. I'm going to pick three. So I think this one would look cute with the feathers. Um, we're going to kind of mix them up with curly tops and whatnot. So that, and then maybe these three with the fringe feathers. And, you know, at this point, if I do this hat that we just did, this is all still wet. And then we want to glue more things on, okay? And this isn't even wet, so I'm concerned is my concern is that if we don't let this dry well enough and then you glue on there what it's going to do to the adhesion for the glue so i'm going to let that dry and i'll finish that up tomorrow hopefully it'll be dry enough tomorrow it's not very thick it's certainly less thick than the mold so but it's it's a lot of it isn't it um so i have a hot glue gun I also have E6000, and the reason I've got both out is I love hot glue, don't get me wrong. Hot glue is a lifesaver, but it's temporary, especially with this holiday stuff, okay? You go, what do you do when, when the holiday's done? You, put, you, you, you pack them up, you put them in a box, and you go store them, most likely in your attic. What happens in your attic during the summer? It gets awful hot. Activates the glue. Lord knows what happens to your stuff after, right? So, unless you have, I think there's a, there's a better glue. Um, but for most of us, we're just getting the craft glue at the store that's cheapest, right? In the bulk. I'm guilty of that. And, you know, so I use the hot glue to give me the quick fix and I use the silicone for the long haul. Does that make any sense? All right, so. Oh, we have this crack. Well, most of that will probably get fixed with this, so. Let's glue some trimmings on. All right, 
So this is the back because we, we know the hook is going to go on the branch like like this way. So it's one way or the other. I'm choosing this to be the back. So we'll start here. Okay, give ourselves a little start with the glue. With the hot glue. And then every so often give it another little dab of hot glue just to kind of hold things in spot okay and a little more of your silicone glue or craft glue you could use i think the um the glue that I like to use for molds is the Tight Bond Quick and Thick. I'll show you that in a sec. So this way, okay, we've got the, the hot glue to make sure whatever we're doing today is all like going to stay. And then the E6000 that I used is a, is a silicone glue will help it last for quite a while. We're going to go just past our seam, okay? A little dab at the end. There. So when this is all dry, this E6000 is a jewelry style glue, so it's, I mean, look how cute! This might be my new favorite. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I mean, you could also probably use like this, this fur that they use for the gnomes comes in like a ribbon. That could be really cute, right? Anything goes, anything goes. Oh my gosh, it's so stinking cute. I'm not going to let that go to waste. I got a little bit of my E6000 that dripped. And let's start with this. A little dab. And of course, with my heaters going, Every, the, there's just the slightest wind here right now, and it's enough to make these feathers get all staticky. Oh, my finger touched the hot plate of the. So, okay. So you get the idea. A little dab of this. little dab of this. And a little bit to join the seam. Cut this a little bit past our seam. So stinking cute. Let's show you what one looks like with this other, with the fringe. Now typically, like, I don't think this fringe unravels too much, but they did use um, tape on the end. That's okay. That's just so that when you're buying a lot of these fringes, they do unravel, they can unravel. So without wasting, I want to try and peel off this tape. Watch it all unravel. <laughs> okay. If they do in their job right, they should always 
tape the end of your fringe. Okay. Or cording, anything that's put together that way. And we have some chopped end there, so we're actually going to cut that end a little bit. And again, pick a back to our, let's do one of these cute little curly cues. So either this is going to be the back or this is going to be, I'm going to say this is the back. Okay. This one has actually less of a band, so we want to keep it nice and tight to the bottom. The nice thing about this is you don't get all that static um, fuzzies getting in the way that we did with the other one. And again, it's because I have my heat, my heaters going here. You know, it's, let me just get something to wipe my fingers because now I'm getting all matters of glue all over my fingers. Okay. And some more E6000, I think. And then we'll do a dab of the hot glue. You don't need a lot. Because don't forget, we're also going to be gluing over this. And again, this could be the tight bond. This is just, I think I used tight bond last time I did these. So it's all a matter of preference. But I do like the hot glue just to kind of, like, kind of like using safety pins, you know, just to hold things in place while you're working on stuff. All right, and then a dab of this. We're going to cut just past our, our, our seam. Maybe. Okay. So that's what one looks like with the fringe. Super cute. Wait till you see these. They're adorable on the tree. All right, so that's how we put the fringe on. Um, in here somewhere I have the cap to my glue. Uh, da -dum, da -dum. Oh well, okay. I will find it when I least want to find it. So again, with our clay, like our other little gnome ornaments, we're gonna make some noses. Just roll it around like it's the, um, like a cookie dough, right? And these are smaller than our chip brush ornaments, so you want smaller, more dainty noses. Noses. Okay, I think that looks good. And then again, you just take the tip of something, anything, a, bra a paintbrush. You can kind of form it a little bit, make it a little more triangle if you want, and then poke little holes for nostrils. Okay. Then again with our glue, and we can use this E6000, I mean the tight bond. This will give us a quick bond. It sets up in like five minutes. All right, so that was a bottom of our nose, so what did I do? And just kind of give it a flat back. Okay, we got our nostrils facing down. And make sure we're to the front of our, of our project. And just start to give it a little glue down. You can kind of shape it a little bit.
So you get, you know, kind of been distorting it. I had a nice little round nose end. All right, I think that's pretty good because when we put the band on, so this one's a little more interesting because you have to have the nose, the clay enough onto your base so that it doesn't break off. But you don't want it so high that it, it messes with the, the band. All right, let's make one more nose. Again, you roll it. All right. We can kind of pinch the top a little bit, make the back side flat. Give it a nice round nose. Make some nostrils. Could be the end of a paintbrush, whatever works for you. Okay, we'll give the fringe guy a nose. All right. All right, so you keep going with your noses till they're all done. Keep revisiting them, make sure they're, they're gonna stick, okay? Where's our other nose? What do I do with our other nose? Is he, can't find him, there he is. Okay, so now we're gonna make a band. Like I said, we can do this holly. And when we're working with the molds, it's a good idea to have a little cornstarch handy, a little soft brush to dust it in with. You don't do this if you're using resin, all right? But then again, if you're using resin, um, you, it would be hard for you to bend it around here. You'd really have to pull it out of your mold really fast. If you're using another product, you're gonna have to um, just play with it till you, till you know how it's gonna work for you. Um, I know some people use something called um, Form flex or flex something compound. Form flex maybe. All right, I'm going to take this clay and I'm going to kind of make a tube out of it. And this clay, I'm telling you, if you watch my other videos, you're probably going to get sick of it. And I have a video on, it's one of our most watched videos, where I talk about the difference between iron orchid design clay and the other clays. And it to me, it's night and day. Um, and I came across it rather by accident, and it really did, it happened very innocently. It's not a gimmick. Um, I just was in a moment, and I noticed how much nicer this, this clay worked compared to the clay that I was using. You know, this was all at the beginning when we were just coming on board with, with Iron Orca Design. And um, they had just come out with this clay. And you know, I didn't expect to be so surprised by it. You know, yes, is it more expensive? Yeah, because you can't use a coupon. Other than that, I don't think it's really more expensive. Um, but the value to me, if you, if you like to use molds a lot, it's, it's worth it to me. It, to me, it's totally worth it. So this we can, oh, that would be cute with the holly coming around his nose. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And then will this go all the way? Not quite all the way around, that's okay. So let's cut this end off. We can, we can use parts of the mold that we want and save the other parts that we don't, it's okay. This is a swag, so this is one end of the swag. Maybe let's do the other end. And again, our cornstarch. We're going to dust it, dust the mold. That's a little aggressive for the, if you have excess, I have a garbage can over here. I'm just gonna tap it into the garbage can, okay. And then 
kind of make a tube and press this nice and flat because the important part is on the bottom side. It's not what you're seeing. This side that we're working with is going to be the back. And the, part, the important part about this is that it's nice and flat. So you see me take a, um, a putty knife. It could be the back of my, my thumb. Whatever, it, whatever works for you. Sometimes, especially if you have the first gen molds that don't have these little micro rims, I find that it was better to almost kind of slice it like that. Whatever works. I do prefer to kind of pull it more sideways, back and forth then one direction all the way. Only because I think that the stress that um, you put on the clay by pulling it in one direction and keep pulling it that direction, it might give you more cracks, but um, I can't say for sure. I feel like that would be the case. And then we're gonna let gravity do its part. Pop that out, okay? And we're gonna use our Oh, here's our cap to our, see, found the, the cap to the E6000, yay. We're going to use this tight bond. We could use the E6000, whatever. The important part to me is that this fringe is on, that that's not going to slide off. And then we're going to glue the back. So should we do this this way? or curl this way. I think it's this way. Okay. I think it's going to be cute wrapped around his nose like that. So you want to put a generous amount of glue on, okay, but not to the point where it's just going to slide all over the place after. So, I mean, it's kind of by eye, and if you did put a lot, just kind of keep gently pressing on the, on the mold after to kind of, once that's on the surface, to kind of get that to kind of ease out. And then when I, not only are we going to glue it down onto the surface, but we're going to pinch it in on itself. Because remember I said we're doing a lot of, um, pulling on the clay by pulling the back smooth and everything. So if we pinch it in on itself, up and down, side to side, okay? Oh, I may not even do any of the trimmings because <laughs> this is just so cute. Can you see him? He is adorable. Look how cute. Let's see. Can you see? Oh. All right, so we're going to carefully kind of turn him. And then we're going to fit, we're going to chop this little end off here that, well, let's see, we're going to maybe kind of, I'm going to marry this over the top of the end of the other mold a little bit, just so it doesn't have like a dried end to it. And then giving it a little extra room, because remember, we're not going to just glue it down, we're going to pinch it on itself. I'm thinking this part right here is a good part to break it off. But let's break it off, not in a straight line, but so it looks like the mold. All right. Put our unused clay back in the bag so it doesn't get dried out because the air dry clay does what it says very well. It dries with the air. All right. So. Again, a generous amount of glue. But not so much that it just slides all over the place. This will set up in like five minutes. 
I mean, it won't be dry, but it won't slide around so much. Okay, we're going to try not to get the fringe caught up in there. We do have to cover the fringe over here, okay. It's kind of a, a song and dance at this point. And we're going to pinch it together. as well as press down without messing the details. I mean, not that I want to stress you out or anything, but this is what we go through. And I guess if this did separate a little bit, I could always throw like one more leaf on there, but it is the back, so I'm not too worried about it. Well, it's kind of the side. Because I have a feeling when this dries, it's going to separate. I should have given it a little more cut. Because remember, I pinched in on itself. So let's add, since I'm talking about how I can add one more leaf. This could happen when it's dry. Oh, here we go. I'm going to take a small leaf. I could have taken an end from the, the swag that we used. We are in our studio our shop, fancy word for studio, um, whatever. And we are on a main street, so we have businesses and stuff around. So that's someone's car alarm or whatever. All right, so now we're going to add just one more piece of the mold. We could have, this could have been a butterfly. It could have been anything else. You could, you could stack them, whatever. And then just kind of pinch it in there, and no one's the wiser. He's going to be stinking cute. But you do want to let them dry. The important thing here is if you can hang them, hang them, because especially with these, the ends are kind of sticking below you know, where the hat ends. So I'm going to sit them at the end of the table right now. But I also found that that glue, if you set them down, you have to be careful that the glue that's on the fringe and everything isn't coming out in, in um, on, you know, from the mold in the, in the fringe, that the glue isn't going to, um, you know, glue the fringe that way that you have it drying. That's what I'm trying to say. Wait, right here. So like, let's say this is the end of my table, right? And we're letting that glue like that, right? Um, I found like, oops, it's all stuck that way. And it was all kind of stiff. So at the end of this video, I'm going to go hang him from something so that we don't have that happen. Let me just show you how to do one with the trimmings mold. Um, let's pick one, any one, right? This one's a nice one. I do like this one. It's kind of Nordic, if you ask me. And it's little. It'll be cute for this little fringy one. There's the trimmings one, two, and three. This is trimmings one. Trimmings three, they did um, kind of bring things together and made the ends so that they fit instead of having straight cut ends, but that's okay. Um, you can fit them around and where the seam happens, you just take like a toothpick and kind of marry the two parts together so no one really notices. Let me see if I can show you in a second. Because if you were doing this like on a, on a frame, and you were going to do a few of them together. All right, so I am going right to, this could have like a little bit of an extra margin on it. It's hard to go side to side on this, but notice what I'm doing is I'm going back on it. So we're getting some dried bits of, of the clay here. I'm going to marry that into our new clay, but in the back part. 
so that it's not going to interfere with the front portion of our mold. All right, I have a little bit of where I can trim off there. Let's see how we have a little gap there. And we're going to use our tight bond. There's our guy with our nose. And we're going to start where we think the front could be. That's a little aggressive for the glue. Of course, that's where the trim has to happen, right? So I don't want to trim around his nose, so I'm just going to take that off right now. That little excess there. You could get like an old paintbrush and kind of work this through. You could use your finger and work it through. Actually, well, that's what I'll do. And if we need to add more glue, we can. So let's stop here. And here's the fun part. With all this static electricity and the heaters <laughs> throwing just enough air around, Let's see if we can't get this onto here. Oh my gosh. So stinking cute. So this mold is going to be a little more interesting because the details aren't as deep. So you might lose a little bit of the details. Don't do your seam in the same spot as your trim seam. Let's add some more glue on this side. Okay. and push it back in on itself a little bit. Remember, because we're doing all this stretching to the clay, we want to put it back in on itself. If there's a little gap on the top here, we can fill that with caulk tomorrow. Okay, but not only push down, but push it back in on itself and pinch it in a little bit. So all this stretching that we've been doing, we're going to kind of correct it. So let's take a little bit extra here. I made a nice fold, and then I'm going to cut. Oh, was that an angle? Oh, well. And then we're really going to make this work. We're going to pinch this in on the seam. I think I have to add some glue. And I think if you did have some glue where the, the two parts meet would help for that seam to stay together. Okay. And just pinch and marry the best you can without losing your details. I'd rather have cut this a little um, extra big and, and, and um, find out that I can trim it again rather than cut it too short and then realize that I should have at, I should have had more to make this seam come together. So I think this is going to be good, but I am going to have to revisit it in the next hour because it's going to move a little bit.
All right, so these have all dried overnight. These are so stinking cute. I don't know if you're able to see like, oh, absolutely adorable. And we do have little areas where the molding, some of them, you know, when I left, they, they separate a little bit more than others. Some of the trim got in the way of things. So we're going to use a little caulk right now. And I do like to use this um, DAP Alex. It's a fast dry. Um, it's a latex paintable. That's the important part. Paintable caulk. But does have silicone in it. So it's very durable. And what I do is when you get the new tube, I don't think you need to get the, the construction grade that goes in a gun. But either way, you're going to slice the tip at an angle and don't make it a very big opening, especially when you're crafting. And if you've ever done the trim on you know, your floorboards around your home and around your doors and things like that, it's the same thing. All right. You could do clear as long as it was paintable. This is white. I don't know if it comes in a clear. I always buy the same one, so... I've never taken the time to see if it comes in another version. And literally, I'm just going around the edge. We don't need to go around the bottom edge. And then with a damp rag around your finger, or a lot of times I just use my finger, um, I would tell you start with like a, a larger finger and work your way down, but it's such a small area that Start with your pinky, and sometimes you might find you're getting out like a, a Q-tip will help. You know, finish off with a damp rag. And the reason that I like to use this quick dry Alex um, caulk is that it really does dry very fast. It says in 20 minutes, so you know, according to their directions, I would be able to paint this in 20 minutes. I've never, I don't know if I've rushed it that quickly before. I've come close, I think, actually, come to think of it. And I don't recall having any problems. Um, I would never rush it on a furniture piece. All right, I'm just going to get right into those edges best you can. This, because of the silicone in here, it'll help also glue the ends that don't have, you know, where it's a little separated. All right, and it's just going to fill that edge. So it's not a very big gap. This one here, see we have a little separation at the seam. All right, we can... If it was bigger, we could take a little more glue and clay. I'm just going to use the caulk. And imagine if this was clay and it was a bigger crack. I would just take, you know, a toothpick or whatever I have, right? I put the glue in. Let's say this caulk is my clay now. All right, it's sticking up a little bit. I would just kind of take my clay and make the lines kind of marry with each other. All right? But it's caulk, so. All right, so no one's going to know that that was there. I'm going to end up trimming some of these feathers that just kind of end up getting in, in, in it involved everywhere. Okay. And I'm going to keep doing this. We'll see you at the next step. All right, we have all our children. <laughs> We have all our children that have been molded and dried and caulked and dried, and we can decorate now. So one thing I noticed when I did these last year, I think I was a little more on the ball. Well, first of all, decoupage really wasn't on my radar. You can decoupage these. Obviously, you can decoupage anything. It would be a little more difficult to do these ones with the little curly cues. And what I did last year is I took sometimes fat ribbon 
and I had curled them around the cones, but obviously for simplicity's sake, you would want to do this before you put the molds on, okay? So if you want to put fabric over your hat, I wasn't a fan of it because I couldn't get it nice and tight. I'm sure there's an easy way to figure out a pattern. Um, first of all, I think it would be best to do it over a straight one, not one that has a little curly end on it, okay? And without the mold there, you can pull it nice and tight, right? And maybe cut it so that you get a nice tight fit because that would be a super cute hat with this fabric. But lo and behold, um, I'm just not going to do it. I wasn't a fan of it last year because it was, it was wrinkly for me and, and I could not figure out, and it's funny, I was going to go into fashion design. I couldn't figure out how to make a pattern to get them nice and tight. So, um, but they're going to be super cute painted. You could also, like, there's other things that we could do. We have, you could decoupage, like I have, this would be too big for these that have this cute napkins that you can get. They're all over the stores now with the holiday themes. You could get plaid napkins. I wouldn't do ones that have, like, I would just cut out, like, one of these dogs, maybe, and decoup decoupage it on one of the hats. Um, this would be super cute. It's, um, it's a fabric that we use to line some drawers in a sideboard. It's got these like, it's like a filigree, um, almost like a damask, but it has these little bees in it. And that would be adorable on one of these, right? And this one you could probably get away with cutting it and decoupaging it in pieces. Perhaps, all right? But again, if you're gonna try and make this a hat, do it before you put the mold for your brim on. I thought, well, you know, you have decoupage papers. I don't have anything that would be really great right now, but like this would be easy to do. You could take parts of this and overlap your, your seams. And it in this, this is um, Art Deco Bird pattern from bells and whistles we have this in stock it comes in a in a big sheet it's uh, I forget the measurements it's like 30 th almost 34 inches by probably you know, more than two feet across or two feet across so you could decoupage right we could this was I thought was cute for we I have a whole collection of these because these are fun the napkins, um, and they have this sort of a nautical holiday theme, which we're all about here. Uh, we like to mix our nautical and our holidays any way we can. So this is a fun one, and you could actually just, I, I might do this on a couple, take a couple of the elements from this, and um, decoupage it onto, you know, a hat. We might try it, let's see it on one, okay? All right, that's an option. You could take, you know, just for the, the, the pattern, you could take, this is the palette wood. I no longer have this. Um, some Dixie Belle retailers might have this left and it is no longer available to us. It's not available to be bought. It was on clearance and everyone bought it up. I noticed last time I went to buy it, it was no longer available. Hopefully they do carry it again, but at this point they don't have it. So this is a possibility. And again, this is something that we could do in sections. I could do like little triangular sections. I might do this on one. This little one with the roses would be really sweet. All right, this one, if you want to do a nautical, this is colorful tiles. These. By the way, these are different than the, the Art Deco birds. This is also bells and whistles. They're rice papers for decoupage. And um, they do have the fibers in them. If you use gator hide as your medium to apply in, the, the white background to this uh, rice paper really gets very translucent. If you use clear coat, it's a little more visible. It's, it's, it's a strange thing. Um, but these also, in this style, 
they come this size, which is, um, I know there's a measurement on here, 11 and 3 quarters by 16 and a half inches long. And there's three sheets in each package. All right. And we sell these, they're like not even $10, nine seventy-four. All right. They're, those are really cute. I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of doing a nautical, sort of a Mediterranean one. But I think that if I try to decoupage, maybe this one here where it's busy, or this one where it's busier, I might be able to get away with a decoupage because you're going to be layering it and, you know, um, piecing it together. Um, you don't want it to have like a solid, like that, that straight pattern that's in the plaid would not be a good um, uh, specimen <laughs> uh, example or to do the uh, decoupage when you have this sort of cone shape on this thing because it's going you know it's it's going in and yet your lines want to go straight but this there is some lines but it gets it's very it's very muddled. So that would be a good candidate. This would be a good candidate. All right. Um, some of these could be a good candidate. Just you want, and when it's something small, the small, a small pattern that's very blurry and, and mishmashed would be a good, would be a good choice for decoupaging. So what I'm going to start with though is I'm going to, I mean, they're so stink. I'm in love with these. We're also going to, because this, the, the feathers were, were, were an issue. I'm going to have to replace a couple feathers because um, we got some glue here and I don't want it to be like chopped up. So what I'll do is I'll take, oh, I put the feathers away. I'm going to take and add like a feather up at the top here and glue it into place so we don't have sloppy feathers, sloppy stiff feathers, okay? We want them nice and soft. All right, so that's what you want to kind of check at this point is making sure like here I got some glue on these feathers. I might fix that too, you know. And now we just, we just have fun. I do like to use, I love this Modern Masters, this, this pearl finish. Um, it's oyster is what it's called. And, you know, whenever you're painting, it's a good idea to um, not work from your jar. So I have my, my palette. It's, someday I'm going to get a new one. Honest. I'm just going to take this lid and go like that. Mm. It ain't fancy, but it does the job. I don't, don't have to mess up a popsicle stick. All right. Um, if I want to do a metallic green, because you know I love this for the holidays, this is Deep Woods, Moonshine Metallics, Deep Woods. It's a beautiful color, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, but just to be safe, I would base it with another green. I have evergreen handy here. Um, if you want it to be like a, a, a rich look, you could base it in a black, okay? And then have the green go over it so some of the black would kind of pop through the background. I don't know, maybe we'll try it. I had really good luck with just the molds on our other project um, with the, um, the paintbrush Santas um, without base coating them in, in a green first. And then I have of course, a red. This is Honky Tonk Red. It's a great Christmas color. It's a good, really, really, really solid Christmas color. These are chalk mineral paints, by the way. Okay, Honky Tonk Red. We have our basic white. We don't need to base coat these because we're going to be putting this acrylic on if we're doing the white. And um, personally, I really like doing this pearl finish on the, on the holiday stuff. But if you want it to be more um, casual, shabby, chic, farmhouse, um, fluff is good. Um, I also have cotton here. Okay. And 
you just start painting. Now, like I said, you don't have to have, of course, all the brushes I have were the ones I like to use. Um, just dampen my brush a little bit. This is not a great brush. I have so many brushes. Let's see, let's try another one. This one's not bad. All right. So this one, look at him. This one, I ended up doing the mold while this was still drying. And so far it seems to be doing really well. I don't see anything rejecting. It's not like lifting up and bubbling up or anything. So that's good. And I'm just going to go over the whole thing, I think. Because, now I think I'd like to do this Holly Lane mold in the green. But I'm going to, you know, the green will cover. I want to see what I, if I like it with just a wash of that metallic green. Just on the Holly Lane. Right? You should have seen these hanging up last night, by the way. I had them all hanging on a hanger. They were so adorable. And if I decide that I want this to this brim, the hat brim to stand out more, I can go over it. It's just paint. Okay? But I'm starting with my easier color to cover. And I love the little sequins in there, fringe. He's like a shabby chic little gnome. And I love how the mold goes around his nose, right? So you just want to get right in there. If you're having a tough time getting the paint to go down into the depths of the mold, use a little water to help it go down. We're going to need some more paint. That's what I say. OK, so I'll finish painting this. And when I get to something different, I'll come back on. All right, we have a bunch done. I have them hanging on the side of my table over here. So like right here, I have, look, whoop, there's one with the oyster that's done on the hat, not on the brim. I'm trying to think, you know, I'm not even sure I'm going to get to any decoupage, you guys. Maybe one with that little, like, seahorse on it and the napkin there. But these are going to be really cute without any of that. You'll see. You'll see. They're just, they're going to be really sweet. I want to show you, I did not, with this Moonshine Metallics and the open clay, you do not need to, I was right, you don't need to base coat it, at least with this color, this deep woods. It's a really cool, it just goes right on, nice and solid. This one, it, the mold has a bit of a, a leafy pattern, but you see how it's nice and solid? Some of these I'm going to do red hats. I, I should have made more because I got too many ideas. And right now, just with this, I think it's seven that I have, just the combination of red, white, and green, I don't even see the possibility of doing any with decoupage really on here that, because I just, I want to get these simple ones out because they don't need a lot in my book. But if you have some really great napkins or tissue that would be a great decoupage project for this go for it we'll see i might i might we'll have to keep watching the video to see what i do because i don't even know at this point all right so i'm adding green to some of these i'm not doing i'm not a fan of green hats um, some of this will be a wash. Let me show you one in one second, what I mean by a wash of the green. I have to decide what I want to do with the red. Because if I'm doing all this pearl and metallic green, like the red can't be plain. So I might have to do some garnet, which is a gemstone mousse. But 
the thing with the gemstone mousse is if you're if you're going to be kind of in a rush to seal it, which in this case, at this point of the game, we're getting awful close to Christmas. I think we're less than 10 days now. Um, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to be rushing the finish on this. So with gemstone mousse, it takes a little while to really kind of cure. So you're best off to put it on after. You can always add a, another coat of a glossy finish that keeps that metallic. But it's basically, it's a water-based gilding product. It's not a wax. I don't want you to confuse it. It's water-based. But you use it like it's a, a, a wax. It's very thick. Um, some of them are thicker than others, depending on the pigments. All right, we'll get to that if we get to it, but just wanted to put that out there that you can do a red metallic with the gemstone mousse. All right, so let me just get through this little brim. I got a little green on the hat, but that's okay because this hat's going to be red underneath, so it should cover. I guess the whole thing doesn't have to be all metallic, right? So we'll, we'll see. Some of them I might leave just the plain red. And I think some of these would be cute without the metallics. Um, but again, I guess I needed to make more. And the nose, we're going to do on the, on the clip coming up. I like to, because the nose is such a little portion of this, I kind of save the nose till after all this, because that way if I get a blur of my green paint or my red paint or whatever on the nose, when I go to paint the nose, I can kind of hide that. All right. But if I had the nose painted now and then I blurred it, um, you know, then I got to go mix my flesh color again. And what if my flesh color doesn't come out the same as my first batch? Because I do it always on the run. If you're going to use a lot of flesh color paint, go ahead and make a lot of it and store it. But I just do it on my palette all the time. I used to care. I had made a bunch of it and kept it in a little jar. But I don't even do that anymore. So that one will look really cute. Okay, we're going to do the red hat. You know, you don't need to see me paint the red. If we get to the, the mousse, I will show you that. But let me show you what I mean by a green wash. I think this one will look cute with a green wash. All right, remember this guy? Oh, he's so cute. Oh. So for the wash, again, you don't want to be dipping into your jar because now we're adding a lot of water, all right? And we want to just keep it to the area that has the details that we want to wash. Okay. We can get a little bit around the edges. But treat this like it's antiquing. Only instead of a black, we're using this metallic green. And I think we might even go over and add a gold over the tips of this. All right, and with a damp rag or paper towel, whatever you have around, just wipe off the top so that the wash or glaze, as we're using it, all right, sits down in there. Let's see how I got some on the nose. And with everything, you want everything sealed first before you do this, because if it's just chalk paint or just the clay, um, you'll have a hard time. It'll stain the open clay. So if you, if anything, you know, put a little top coat on it if you don't paint it. So see how that's going to be 
really, really cute in and of itself. And again, I might add a little gold too to this one. And this one will be done, except for the pom-pom, pom-pom in the nose. All right, so I'm going to keep working with the green and we'll see you at the next step. Okay, so we are at a good point. We have some good base coats going on. All right, here's another again with the red and the green. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, painting with these feathers, you're going to see in a second, um, it's not for wimps, okay? We're going to have to, I don't know if you can tell, we're going to have to trim some feathers. And this is like, this is when, I mean, I'm trying to really grab them and hold them down and, and do my best to, to kind of, without tearing the feathers off, just sort of, you know, getting kind of in there um, as best as I could. A couple coats in most of cases here. Um, let's see what else we have. We have this one. Oh, I still have to do the bottom, so we can do that together. Because these feathers, if you're an impatient person, I, I suggest you go with the fringe in these two options versus the feathers. It's just that the feathers are so darn cute. It could it it could totally be worth your efforts. All right, so. I'm trying to get a good angle of that because he is just adorable. All right, so we're going to fix him. Don't want to get him into that paint. This one's pretty much done except for the pom-pom. Okay. How cute is he? And what else do we have? I have them hanging on the side of my table here. This one's pretty much done. Okay, all I did was the wash of the, of the Deep Woods metal, moon, Moonshine Metallics and the red on the hat. You know, we could embellish these. You know, there's these stamps. Well, we'll get that to the next step when we're doing some embellishing. We'll talk about options because from, you know, these are just ideas at this point. I showed you the, the, the basics of this. And um, you're going to do what you do. This is what I'm doing. So I want to kind of touch, we're going to go into some of the embellishments right now. I did this one, okay, and it's got gold. And then I didn't really like it, and I kept thinking about that decoupage. So what I'm doing is I'm whitewashing a little, I'm not whitewashing, aqua washing some of the uh, moonshine metallics, and it's called Caribbean. It's this beautiful, beautiful blue color. They also make one uh, more blue than this. This is more of like an aqua of the blues. There's one called Pacific that has, it's more blue blue. And I'm doing a wash of this because, you know, this will be our seaporium style one where we're marrying, you know, the sea colors with the holiday. We're going to do a little decoupage with that napkin. And I'm just doing the wash of this Caribbean metallic over the gold. And it doesn't, I could have just done like a black wash over this, but then I just felt like it was going to, he was, he was going to get too elegant. <laughs> He's a gnome right so you get the idea this is just a soft brush it's watered down i shouldn't be dipping into the at least i'm only dipping into the lid but for those who 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 know me who who watch my other videos you know like i get in a moment and i and i just go with it and that's where i'm at right now because i'm so excited for these i want to get them done show them off to you guys okay so so that's gonna be really cool you know the feathers we might have to trim <laughs> the struggle is real you guys um, let me put this into some water we'll get back to the wash let me just kind of put this lid I, I made a mess of this for some reason gonna have to clean that rim 
But I want to get, I want to show you with this decoupage. Okay, like I said, there are options. We could use tiny little stamps, okay? Last year's holiday um, release of stamps with Iron Orchid Designs had this set. Okay, this is um, Merry and Bright. And it has some really small details. Like you could probably take Merry Christmas and, and you would just carefully roll the stamp over, you know, the hat. I'm not going to do the stamping on these. I don't think they need it. I think they're just super cute the way they are. Um, but that's an option. You know, you could just put joy. Uh, there's these little deers. These would be super cute. Um, from two years ago, there was one called um, Holly Jolly. And Holly Jolly had um, different size ornament, like bobble ornaments. And they also had like a small, like different size snowflakes. There was a really small snowflake that would have worked. We could also use, speaking of which, we were using on our brush ones. Here's the Merry and Bright one, okay? There's a really, there's even a smaller snowflake than this one, but I lost mine. And then Cozy has some neat little small details, okay? And we use some of the stitching ones on our chip brush Santas. And I think those lend itself better to the stamps because at least you have one flat side. But if you're comfortable with stamping, you could certainly stamp these. You could try to, to stripe these, but it's, you know, it's going to be hard. It's going to have to be by sight because if you try and tape a straight line around here, it ain't going to happen. It's just not going to happen. But we can decoupage. And there's a couple ways to do this. Um, you don't want really wet fingers. Let's see if I can get this to work. Um, you want to separate the layers. Sometimes napkins have three layers. These are not that fancy. All right, so one of the best ways to do this, and, and, and I don't want to see, I don't know why it's so dark here now. It, nothing has changed since the last time, but now it's dark. I don't know why. So, honest to God, best way of separating your, your little thin layers of napkins Okay, just keep trying until, and of course I'm going to have to get my little readers on because I can't see, and that worked. I don't understand. And this has like an embossing on the side, so we can't really use the very edges very well. We might be able to get away with a little bit of it, but see? And then sometimes you have to do that again after you get these separated. I saved the blank white parts, okay? I saved them um, because when um, we also did a really cool ornament last year, I have a couple of those left. Um, as, as crazy as it was, like people love to do them for a class um, and, they, and they love the idea on my video. Um, it just hasn't been a hot seller. So I didn't make any more this year because there's a lot of work. But what I did is I took glass bulbs and I put, you can actually put a transfer on this little thin part of your napkin. You can stamp them and then decoupage them onto the back of your, ball, of your glass ball. And then paint over that, add your molds or whatever. I kept a little window frame. That's a really fun one to do, and maybe I'll do that as a video next year. All right, so I don't want to use my nice little small sewing scissors for paper. It, it's just not going to do it. We're going to use some regular scissors, and let's see. I am just going to do my best to kind of cut this where I want it there. Okay, now I'm going to take a brush and we're going to tear the edges. 
so that we have a really fine edge around this little seahorse. And let's try and go for this starfish too. We can always reposition that one. Okay. And just see how, because it's so thin and these are like super cheap napkins. These are probably like dollar store napkins. Okay. All right, so just carefully tear off what you want. And let's see how much we can fit. So we can get the seahorse on here. Let's move the starfish next to him, maybe. Okay. Maybe I want to hold on to the nose. We don't want to lose the end of his, his, his nose there where his little mouth is. But all right. So now we can take, I have some clear coat. Oh, it's going to roll off the edge of my um, palette there. And I'm just going to give it a coat of clear coat. You want a, a decent amount of this. This is not a great brush. And we don't have to worry about how, like a direction that we put this in, okay? Or on, I should say. And don't forget, he's gonna have a pom-pom, so he can All right, let's get a better brush. This is a better one, I think. Better than the other one anyways. Make sure that wherever this is going down has top coat underneath. The clear coat satin is what I'm using because um, we want to keep a sheen to this hat. We can go higher from here, but if I started with gloss and I decided it was too shiny, then um, technically, you know, you'd want to <clears throat> tack up your surface because you can go, you know, shinier over a flatter without any problems. But look how cute. That's going to be cute. That is going to be cute. But you don't want to, um, you know, go shiny and go more flat afterwards. All right, so let's trim up this starfish a little bit. We don't want a lot of this edging. We do want the holly. Okay. And again, we can kind of, we can overlap part of this if we want. But keep in mind, it's going to be fairly... You know, translucent. Let's cut the edge of this off so that we can see his nose. There. All right. And then you're using the same top coat, whatever it is you're using. It could be Mod Podge if you're if you're familiar with that. If you're if you're already using that, go ahead and use that. All right. And let's fix this holly leaf that I tore. Close enough. All right. He's gonna be super cute. All right, so the rest of these, they're going to be straight out paint. And um, we might add some little, you know, ribbon 
We got to do pom poms. We got to do the nose. So let me kind of tidy up here and I'll catch you on the next clip. Okay, we're in it to win it at this point. I keep saying that, don't I? <laughs> I have a little mix now going of, well, I'm starting, let's see. A little bit, this, the tiny little bit of red. We're going to mix it into the white. That's actually, that tiny bit was a little aggressive. But let's get a color going. That could be our nice rosy color. Okay, let's take a little bit of this. About the same amount of the yellow, maybe a little less. We're going to add a little more white. I'm just using some acrylics that I have. Just because they're easy to get a little dab out. You can use our chalk style paints. The white is cotton. If you want to um, come down a hair, but it wouldn't make a difference in this, in this particular case, but it would be fluff. All right, so that looks like a nice light skin color. You keep playing with your red and your yellow, your white, to get a color that you like and then again with the feathers we have to be very careful I've sealed everything because we're also going to do a little bit of um, embellishing on the molds okay so if I had any, you know, like that one nose for sure, I got a little bit of green on it. These feathers are, are, they are a force to be reckoned with. Just, you know, get your flesh tone into the nostrils. Just do your best with the feathers if you have feathers. And then you could take a little bit of this pink, maybe. We need a little bit more pink than that, so we'll add a little more red. And then you can kind of just blend it. You make like a, a crescent shape with the rosy color. I hope you can see that. You know, you just play with it till you get what you like. All right. Now I want to show you that nose is done. All it needs to get is sealed. We have, I was telling you about the gemstone mousse. Okay. We have, this is the diamond. This is garnet. We have gold. There's also amber, which is basically a copper. And so for this guy, I think I'm just going to kind of brush over him with the gold. But see, we're getting a little empty here because I like this a lot. So let's see if we can't get some out. It's getting a little dry down at the bottom. Yeah, it's a little dry because, you know, I use this a lot and maybe it wasn't sealed great. Let's see what we can get if it'll rub on. All right, so again, just the, the, like stenciling, just the smallest amount. And I'm just going to take this. You could use, you know, a Q-tip and just rub it around. Now, I have it sealed because gemstone mousse, if you're going to um, plan on sealing this afterwards, you have to give it plenty of time to dry. And I'm saying plenty, like, it might be a good week or more. Okay, so typically I do this last so that after my sealing, so that I don't have to wait for the gemstone mousse to dry. I mean, this will be dry to the touch, but it's not something you want to go and seal over until it has plenty of time to dry. So this could also have been the wax at this point because it's just rubbing on. 
But you know, the nice thing about this is if you're using it with a brush or whatever, it's, it's water cleanup. And just doing that adds, you can see all the details now. All right, so now he just needs a pom-pom and he'll be done. Let me show you another one. Um, actually, our, our nautical one, the gold got a little mucky. So again, I've sealed these, so I'm just going to go over the top and bring back our gold a little bit. I could have done this with the actual paint, but I just wanted to show. You get a nice shine. It goes on just like the gilding waxes. And it's such a small amount. You can stencil with it. You can, you could paint, you know, a piece with it. A little would go a long ways. You'd want to have a base color of a, of a gold first. You would want it to be a small piece because it's, I think it's like $15 for the, the little jar. So he's super cute. We'll do his nose. And then he'll just be ready for a pom-pom. What I do? Oh, I keep putting this. Was that the one? No, that wasn't the brush we were using. This one. There it is. All right, just carefully go around best you can. Even the fringe, you do have to be careful, you know, you don't get the paint on there because it's a fabric. You're not, it's not going to um, come off of there very easily. But especially the feathers. Because, you know, feathers, they get all muddled down if they get too wet with something or if you try and if you get a little paint on there it's the glue whatever so definitely gonna have to do a couple spots where I just glue on a feather to hide some things all right so he is looking pretty good just a pom-pom for him this one I don't think, I'm going to leave him alone. We're just going to do the nose. Not all of them have to have all kinds of golden glitter and all that. Oh, we could add glitter. We could do the snow glitter over the some of the molds. Because you would still see the details, right? Oh, that could be fun. But I do like to add a little bit of yellow to our pink mix to make the flesh tone. It does make a big difference. And even still, like now, that's a pretty pinky nose. So we could kind of go and add a little more yellow and make it more fleshy. Okay. And then let's add a little bit of our rosy color. I mean, if you wanted, you could also add like a little dot of, of like bright white opposite of your, your little crescent blush here to kind of really give it depth, but I don't think they need it. So I'm going to keep embellishing. I'm going to show you, see this one. I will add some gold to this one. This has the, the wash of the green. I didn't add any red to the berries. Some of them I went and added red to the berries. We don't have to do like all of it in the gold just to kind of give some highlights. 
because I think you'll find, you know, it, this light wash and the white. The gold can kind of muck up a little bit. It's just, I'm just trying to add just a little, a little something extra is all. Just on some very tips. Maybe the berries. Okay, we'll do his nose. What else? Oh, I wanted to show you this one. I did the, I'm going to have to fix those feathers. Um, I did the red and I went over with the pearl as a wash. And now I'm going to do just a wipe of the gold and let's see what happens. And again, very lightly. This is a very delicate um, pattern. Um, I wish, you know, the mold on this one was a little deeper. They got better as they went along, but some of the, like this trimming's one mold, the, some of the molds are pretty shallow. So it's easy to lose some of the details. I'm just trying to give it a little, little something extra here. I could have done it in silver. We could have done a wash of black instead of the white. I was just trying to keep it to a happy place. Okay, so now that has a little more richness to it. And so this one, we have a little bit of everything going on. We have the little berries. We have the green holly. I'm thinking I might leave that one alone. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, let's add a little bit of gold to this one. It has the red berries, okay. And again, not a lot. And if, you, if you're more comfortable, just use like the tip of your Q-tip or something. Because you don't want these to be gold leaves. You want them to still be green. And I'm staying away from the red because we're going to put the garnet on there. Just to give them a little shine. I'm going to keep those red. And again, we'll do his nose. Oops, I got a big glop on my finger. But you'll find you use these little gilt, whether it's gilding wax, which we have, you know, they come in a different container, that's gold. I use that a lot again, and it's a matter of preference. Silver, I use this a lot, the, the, the petroleum-based wax. Um, the gilding, the actual gilding wax I'll use to freshen up hardware. Because it'll hold up for quite a while. And if you're just going over the brass or the gold tone, it's just gonna give it a fresh look, and then eventually it'll just sort of wear away in the spots that are used like it would normally anyways. There. Just a little bit. So pretty. I love the holidays. I love the bling. Now let's go over with the garnet. Get the gold off my finger and the garnet is brand new I had to open a new one my other one was um, from a bad batch that they they went and um, took care of everyone on okay and I'm again we're just opening this so I'm going to stir it up 
you, it's very important to stir these really well. Some of them, like I said before, they come in different consistencies depending on the metallic pigments that are in there. So some you can shake and stir, some you're just going to stir. But you really want to do a good job of mixing this up. It's like the primers. This had like some, look like an oil at the top. But again, this is a water base, so we're just really making sure all this is mixed evenly. But it's such a pretty color. And I definitely, definitely, I mean, the holidays, come on. It's the time to, or, or Valentine's Day. Now, this was our last one because, you know, we're off season. And I don't carry a lot of the metallics anyways, but if, if, the, if you ever um, are in need of anything, um, give us a little time. We can put it into our next order for you. We could prepay that for you, send you the link to pay, or um, just wait for our next order for sure, and we'll just... Um, this I'm just going to kind of paint it on because the, the little dots are so dainty. And I'm just going to go over where the red is just to give them a little shine. I'm not going to do the hat. Oop. Looks like I had some paint that was lifting up there, so I'll have to fix that with my red paint. There. It's going to be super cute. And what else are we going to do for... Oh, I know what it is. When I put the top coat on, I'm hanging them on the side of my table, and he was, like, right under. And so the top coat loosened the... Um, the paint because that hadn't fully cured yet and then that's clay behind that so that got a little wet when everything else got wet and so um, I must have a little dab of of um, red paint underneath my table here so that's what that is not that you needed to know all that all right so I think that one I'm leaving this one we did this one, I guess we could also, he got up against the table. Just a little bit, I guess, because the green's shiny, why not? But with the satin um, top coat on here, I put it on generously. The hat has a nice shine to it, so I'm not concerned that it, it isn't a metallic like these are. It looks nice, I think. When I do the windows, which will get going soon, and I will try to get a video up. Um, it's kind of my thing, the windows that I do with Iron Orchid Design Products and the Dixie Paint. Like, it's crazy. And I do a lot of the gilding on them, just to kind of take them over the top. That's cute. I don't know if I'm going to add any gold to the leaves on that. Let's try leaving that one alone. So like I said, there's just so many ideas. I don't know where to, where to stop. I, I might have to make more of these. All right, so I'm going to finish the noses. And we'll talk about maybe some greenery or bows or something. Oh, we got, oh, we got to do pom-poms. Pom-poms. All right, you guys, we're in, the, we're in the thick of it here. Truth be told, this is the third time we've tried this video. My um, sound is not cooperating, so let's try. Let's try it again. So I have a needle and thread. Oh, we're going to have to get new thread. If you haven't sewn before, it's not a big deal, but you don't want to lose these needles. Okay, so I'm going to keep it in the top of my thread. All right. I got glue on my hands and everything. It's a hot mess. A little bit of paint. 
but you know it's in the sandbox it's okay it's, make sure you're not judging me when you're watching the video all right so you can buy these little threaders there's these little tiny wires that are big loops and you feed your your thread through that then you take that little tiny loop and you push it through the eye of the needle however i have my readers on so i'm able to see well enough to get the thread through the needle and this is not the greatest quality thread it's it's a little weak in my opinion so i'm going to double it normally i would say no if you have a good quality thread but this is like a loose weave on the back side so um you know i want to i want to um have a good size knot and having it doubled helps all right all i did is i wrap it around my finger roll it off and then pull that whole mess down to the end okay now sometimes when you're doing it more than once trying to get it over your same knot can be a challenge so you might have to do it more than a couple times so all right I got it rolled off my finger and I just take the end of my finger pull it down and see it's just like a hot mess knot on the end that's what we want for this fabric this is a fabric okay that's a, a fur it's a short fur don't use like the long fur that you use for the beards of your gnomes okay your sewing gnomes you're going to take the needle from the bottom side up and wrap and tuck so that the end tucks under all right just keep wrapping up and under up through the top and under the back side tucking the end all right i think this is called a whip stitch not entirely sure okay just between you and me i was going to go into fashion design i should know this thing right no nope. i can't remember what i ate yesterday so let alone what stitch i'm doing here here we go till we get back to the beginning I think we're almost there pulling it nice and tight and see it makes like a nice little circle nice little pom-pom and that's the idea so now I'm almost like a one stitch away from my beginning and I want to keep my center in place here I could use like a, a dab of hot glue I don't have this on and, and, and put it in there but when I go to pinch this on to the end of my gnome and get awful hot on my fingers so here we go we have you know we could put them on the end of this okay and pull it tight like I'm going to show you in a second but I want to show you when you have them straight right and we have this paper clip here oh, where's my pocket let's see didn't want to lose that little pocket okay we have our pocket we're going to get our tight bond we could use the e6000 you know whatever you whatever you like let's try the e6000 i did tight bond with the other ones let's do e6000 with this one and maybe we'll find one works better than the other i don't you know e6000 is a silicone glue and it's meant, you know, it, it'll definitely stick for like, your jewelry needs. I put a good amount in there. All right, now we're going to take this over the top. We got, we got our, our thread. We want to make sure we have that. And we're going to pull this over the top. And we're going to punch that little paper clip right through the fabric. All right now we're going to pull this nice and tight this is where i found the single 
threading wasn't working. When I was trying to pull this nice and tight, I was getting some breaking. And then you're going to make a knot. All right. It's good to do this, you know, maybe in an un, un, unseen spot. So we can kind of spin this to the back. Because I guess if anything, you're going to get a pom-pom area that isn't perfect where these knots are happening. So I have a loop here. Okay, see this loop? I'm going to stick my needle through there once and then another couple of times. Now very slowly and carefully pull that so that this loop keeps riding down, kind of like it was riding off of our finger, right back to the end. And just to make sure we get everything nice and tight, I'm going to do a running stitch because this is still not really tight. It's better when you can see the end of your, um, your knot so you know that you've got it, you got it pulled nice and tight before, you know, um, at the end. I don't think that that knot made it all the way to the end of the fabric. Nice and tight in there, so. And I'm just doing this running stitch, up and down, up and down, and pulling it nice and tight around the hat. Trying to do it at that bottom edge of the fabric, if you can find it. Okay. Just so that, you know, we're not defluffing any of this pom-pom above. That's why I'm trying to do it from the bottom. All right. And this is just me being extra cautious. I think just having the pom-pom, you know, on here, you could have done the knot before we even... Um, put the glue in and glued it on. I'm just taking it an extra step, trying to make it as, as taut around our hat as possible. And again, we have our loop. All right, and my last stitch, I made my loop. And I'm gonna wrap my needle around that a couple times. And we're gonna try to get that right up, nice and tight in there. Okay. And again, you could just buy pom-poms. All right, we have a couple done because again, this is my third shot at the video. <laughs> all right, they all have their glue. This one needs to get his hook straightened up here. Super cute, super fun. Most of these, because you have the holly, in, in, well, I have the holly. Um, I don't think that adding any embellishment is going to do any good. Like, you know, like adding something to that to me makes no sense. It's already got leaves. And the same with this one, with the, I know it's like an olive leaf. It doesn't make any sense. However, there's a couple here that I just used these trimming molds, and I may add a little something something, okay? These little holly leaves are kind of a, a, an interesting thing. These molds are a lot smaller than our chip brush molds were. So it's sticking up a lot more than I'd like for it to. So I'll see what I can do with that. I might just like glue the separate leaves down. But you know, that's just nuts and that's not even nuts and bolts. That's just the icing on the cake. And again, like I said, I'm going to get some of the um, feathers from the, my little ribbon of feathers. And I'm just going to take some of these out and fill in with a feather or two with a little dab of glue right at the top there where it needs to get fixed. If it, Because I've been kind of pl plucking some of the feathers that have paint or glue on them. Okay. There. So we'll get you some close-up views. I think this is a fun project. 
I have dissected every little step for you. And I appreciate you watching. This has been super fun. I can't even like, they're each different. They're each unique. And I think I need to make more because I have so many more ideas. Where's our one with the, oh, here he is. He still needs his pom-pom, but oh, how cute is this? If you like my kind of crazy, please give our social um, sites a, a follow. It's all of it is slash Seaporium. All right. Our website, seaporium.com. If you go slash collections, it'll bring you right to everything that's available um, online where you can buy the stuff in store as well. We're Iron Orchid Designs and Dixie Bell Retailers. So please check it out. And um, we also have videos available on Facebook, YouTube, I mean, uh, Instagram, TikTok. We have a lot of fun. And I hope you find this is a fun project. If you do this project, please share it with us. We'd love to see what, you, what you've done with it. And until we see you next time, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.